Hello, I'm Chris from Las Vegas, and I'm an ex-evangelical. So the last time I saw you guys, <clears throat> I talked about my deconstruction story. And I teased the idea that I was going to talk about other weird things and other stories that have happened to me in Las Vegas. And um, what a day to share with you. Yesterday was my birthday, and today is Palm Sunday 2022. And... Um, it just sounds like a great day to share a story. So I once joined a UFO cult, and this is how it started. So in my 20s, after I left Evangelical Church, um, I was doing a lot of soul searching. And I had always done a lot of research on the paranormal and the supernatural. And always, I've always had an active curiosity when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, I was that weird kid in school who was chapters ahead and who got a lot of free time. And when I used my free time in school and I had open uh, periods, I would go to the library. And what I would study in the library was the paranormal and the supernatural and UFOs and hauntings and um, psychic phenomenon, all that weird stuff that uh, science is trying to gain a handle on, but all they can do is document it. Well. I've read all sorts of, sorts of books on all sorts of subjects when it came to that sort of thing as a child and was very enamored with it. So after I had left Evangelical Church in my 20s, I decided to actively research more in a personal level. So I hung out with ghost hunters and witches and vampires and people who live alternative lifestyles. And one of the amazing groups that I had gotten to visit was the Starseed Awakening group, and it was a group of UFO abductees and contactees. So this is the story on how I once was in a UFO cult. So what is a Starseed contactee group? Well, basically it's a group of um, like-minded individuals who believe in the ancient astronaut or ancient um, the ancient astronaut theory. Now, what is the ancient astronaut theory? It is the idea, if you've ever watched the Not History Channel, if you ever watched Ancient Aliens, you would understand that <laughs> the ancient astronaut theory is that in the ancient world, um, human beings were visited by UFOs, by aliens, and these aliens had imparted knowledge as well as occult ceremonies, uh, mathematics, engineering, uh, archaeology, uh, ar architecture, <laughs> and agriculture basically as gifts to primitive man. Now, number one, I am not, I don't consider myself a UFO abductee. I don't consider myself a UFO, UFO contactee. I don't consider myself um, someone who adheres to the ancient astronaut theory, but I've read all those old books on it. So like I know all about it. And um, I'm very much entertained by the show Ancient Astronauts, even if I don't believe any of it. Number one, there's holes. It's a slap in the face of recorded history. And it's also a slap in the face of the ingenuity of ancient man. So um, as far as aliens uh, imparting uh, any knowledge for ancient man to build what they've built or, or to accomplish what they've accomplished, accomplished is... Um, under the surface racism and like on top of it, just the slap in the face to all recorded history. But the thing is, you have no. abductees, they believe in this theory. Um, so in the contactee group, there were two managers of it. One was named Sherry and the other one was named Misha. Both UFO contactees, not abductees, with their own UFO stories. And what they would do is they would host a sort of clandestine group on Friday nights to talk about your UFO um, experiences, whether you had seen UFOs, whether if you had had contact with aliens, whether or not you felt presences, um, had psychic feelings and emotions. Um, even people who had never had alien or UFO stories ended up in this group and would talk about how much they really want the aliens to show up. It was that kind of a group and it was kicking on Friday nights. So it's funny because uh, Misha, the host of this group, 
I had seen her before on an on an alien abduction documentary, and this was like a badly like produced documentary in the '90s. So honestly, 20 years before I had joined this group, I had seen this lady in a documentary. And as far as I could say when it comes to alien abductees and contactees, is they believe their story, or at least when they tell their stories, they believe what happened to them happened to them. So this lady, in 20 years, she hasn't changed her story but a lick, like not at all. Every no, every consonant, every word that she had used in this UFO abductee um, documentary that I saw that was produced in the late 90s was the exact same that she was giving in the later 2000s and the two teens, the 2000 teens. I believe I was in this, the UFO contactee group, I believe it was 2012, 2013. I was just about to go to medical school, right before medical school. So, How would it, how it's like, how the group goes is it's like you're sitting in a circle. It's very much like group therapy if you've been in a group, in a group therapy setting where people share. So people would talk about ships that they'd seen in the sky or people would talk about aliens that they had met in their bedroom or ships that they've gone on. And each and every one of them believed it wholeheartedly. But also they believe in every UFO show that's on television. They believe in every science fiction movie because they would reference science fiction movies as they would tell their UFO stories, which in, in and of itself is odd. But the thing is, all of them, what they have in common is they all had a love for science fiction, they all had a love for the occult, and they all practiced the occult, which is a very odd thing for science fiction UFO abductees to practice. But in their mind, they believe that aliens came into the ancient past and taught human beings all sorts of things. So I guess one of those things that they believed is they thought, taught human beings shamanism because they, they apparently believe if you practice the occult, it will open up psychic powers so you could see the aliens. So <clears throat> if you are in an alien abduction group or contactee group, they want to contact aliens each and every day. They want the aliens to be on their hotline. They want the aliens to be on their call list. And uh, they want the aliens to answer. So they practice all sorts of occult activities, believing that they can talk to aliens. Now, there was a time in my life that I was uh, walking down the hippy dippy trail and I embraced such ideas as crystals and magic cards and lighting candles and saying wishes and all sorts of whimsical things um, that I, I have since let go of. Um, but my story in the UFO contactee group is I taught the UFO contactees to um, read crystal balls. And I thought that the, the best way to uh, to tell you about my experience in the group without outing the group or without, um, without uh, insulting them whatsoever, because I truly wholeheartedly believe that each and everybody in the group believed what they were saying, believed the experiences that they had lived. And I had come into the group because um, even though I had, I don't believe that I was contacted by aliens, the group did. They listened to my UFO story and they were like, okay, yeah, you're totally a contactee. You're totally a UFO abductee. Either or they're doing complete projection or they were just that welcoming a group. And honestly, as far as human beings go, that's just ridiculously sweet. I don't believe I'm a UFO abductee, but they wanted me to be. They wanted to welcome me into their group, and that's just sweet as can be. So without betraying them, the only story I could tell you is the story when I got to host one of the UFO groups. So back in the day, I was down that hippy-dippy trail, staring into crystals and seeing visions, and um, I decided to teach a class on crystal ball gazing. Now, I've got a rather um, <laughs> eclectic library, to say the least, 
And there's at least a half a dozen books, if not a dozen, if not two dozen, on crystals and crystal ball gazing and wow. minerals and stuff like that. So I've got like about 13 of these. So I, uh, we rent out the like clubhouse at um, Misha's um, trailer park and I host a crystal ball gazing class. So everybody, all these UFO abductees are sitting in a circle. We're all staring into crystal balls and I'm encouraging them, encouraging them to stare into the cracks and the little inclusions and the phantoms, all these little shapes inside the crystal and encouraging them to do creative visual, visualization or to daydream or to just get lost in, in ideas to see how they feel. So as I'm teaching them the class, one of the kids has a complete episode because not only are there adults in this crystal, not only are there adults in this uh, UFO abductee cult, there are kids too. There are teenagers who feel like they have been abducted by aliens. So during my class, trying to teach people how to meditate, one of the kids has an episode to where he says an alien in the shape of a demon is trying to talk to him through the crystal ball. So like, in the middle of that, Misha and Sherry, the two like group leaders of the UFO cult, take the kid away and try to, I don't know, counsel him, talk to him. But the deal is they don't believe in demons or mental illness or anything like that. They're trying to contact the alien. They're trying to talk to the alien inside this kid. Now, immediately after this happens, I stop the crystal ball class because I'm like, okay, this is just not the thing for this alien abductee group to hear. So I immediately pack up all my stuff and like I'm trying to like tell everybody, yeah, like get out of your trance, it's all over. Um, we're gonna see what's going on with this kid. And this is right before I went to medical school. So after the training I've had, I would have handled this in a completely different way. But Misha and Sherry are trying to like counsel this kid who thinks demons are coming out of crystal balls to get him. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, I feel so bad. I'm ha I made this kid have like some psychic break or some psychotic break, you know? And the, what they're trying to explain to me and what the kid's parents are trying to explain to me that this kid is a UFO abductee and that he's had these episodes before and that my crystal ball class didn't engage anything like he's done this before and i'm like okay so this kid looking back this kid is probably dealing with some sort of mental illness and he's at that horrible in between age to where he can't express things to his parents and his parents are most likely ufo abductees who think that this is just some sort of supernatural phenomenon rather than getting him maybe counseling or medication so <clears throat> the UFO ladies are doing like UFO techniques on him. I'm packing up my crystal balls in my car. I'm telling them this has all been a lovely experience. I don't believe I'm a UFO evictee, but thank you for inviting me to a UFO cult. <laughs> and, and like that was that. But I had gone to this UFO um, group for a good six months and I listened to everybody's stories. And honestly, they believe them. They believe them as wholeheartedly, as wholeheartedly as I'm talking to you now. And what I love about human beings is when you get them all together, in a group, they come together as a group. They share each other's fantasies, each other's triumphs, each other's failures. They share it all. Human beings infect each other in a wonderfully magical way. Um, as far as me being a contactee again, I do not believe that I'm a UFO contactee or abductee. Um, I don't believe that aliens come to me, and if they did, I would not be cool with it. Um, I have seen strange phenomenon in the sky, but that was pretty much my UFO stories to the group. I was like, I've seen lights in the sky without a transponder. Yeah, all, all um, FCC 
vehicles in the sky. They have to have a transponder to identify identify themselves as a airplane. And I've seen lights in the sky that didn't have transponders and that would move in odd ways. Um, I'm a military brat. I grew up, I was born on and grew up on an Air Force base. We were buzzed by like military planes all the time as children. So as far as commercial air travel, I can identify that sort of thing. But I have seen lights and orbs in the sky that would defy things that I had grown up on, grown up seeing. But I don't believe that alone qualifies me to be a UFO abductee or contactee. And as far as um, my love for the occult, um, that is all, <laughs> that is all very much a thing in the past. I have my appreciation for the knowledge of it all. I love all the old books. I love the practice of the ancient world. But when I look at those old books now, um, I honestly look at them in an anthropological way. Um, and I look at the old people with the beliefs of the ancient world, and I look at that as a window into what they believed in their time not a reflection of who we are in our time. And I believe that it's important to learn from history. And as far as crystal balls and minerals and cool stuff like that, I live in the desert and I love natural art now. As far as the mystical stuff, I think it's pretty and I think it's historical, but at the same time, and more so, I love nature art now. I love that Mother Nature grew this, and it took decades, if not centuries, for this crystal to grow and craftsmen to shape it into a sphere. I love how um, a craftsman can take wood and do intricate wood carvings into a table, and um, it being one of a kind. So as far as all of this cool stuff, I love earth art now, and I appreciate, I appreciate it as that, as earth art. Now, next time, I'm not really sure what story I'm going to tell. I could tell about how I've been in the occult underworld in Las Vegas and seen how that operates. I've met witches. I've met druids. I've met vampires. Um, I used to work in the adult world in Las Vegas and there is an adult underworld in Las Vegas I'd be happy to share a story or two from that and um one or two supernatural stories that I have I have gone through so um I will uh figure it out and always from Las Vegas hope health happiness I hope you're all taking care of each other I hope you ask questions I hope you're skeptical and I hope that you don't fall too headlong into a cult or a religion.